If you notice, there are recommendations in three major areas. Recommendations for the political parties, recommendations for government, and recommendations for civil society. Because this is, this is not one effort of a political party or of civil society or of government. We all need to play our part, even the electorate. And so it's time now for people to look seriously at the recommendations, political parties, government and civil society, to see what is it that we will put in place to do this. I am happy that the Minister of Education, the Honorable Patrick Farber, who served as a member of the advisory committee for this project, when we had a presentation, he, he actually said, at the presentation, and I'm not telling tales out of school, that he would like to sit down with somebody from the People's United Party to look at what both parties can do to help to fast track women's political leadership. And that is encouraging. And so it's, it's for all the different agencies to actually take stock and see where we want to go. Because if you want more women in politics, it can happen because the women are there. And I must say, the Women in Politics Project actually proved that. To date, we've trained 98 women, and while none of them are elected at the national level, it's not for a lack of trying. In terms of gathering the information, can you tell us a little bit more about the methodology you Well, in terms of the methodology, a number of people were interviewed. There were some focus groups of women who who are actually city councillors now, city and village councillors. There were some men in the focus groups. There were key informant interviews, people who were interviewed because of the knowledge they have in terms of the subject. And there were interviews from by the Secretary Generals of both political parties. Some ministers were interviewed. Some of the members of the Women in Politics Project were interviewed. So it's a wide cross-section of people that were interviewed for this document.